Hello, hello everybody. This is Thekla Petridou, a Greek Cypriot psychologist and author, and this is our weekly video blog, aka vlog, in English. Today's subject is the title of one of my five books. I've written five books so far that are fortunately are only published in Greek so far. Our, my fourth book has the title should I stay or should I go? Which is a question that uh, many uh, of my readers or my YouTube subscribers or the people who email me pose to me quite often. Should I stay in my relationship or marriage or should I go? Is my relationship or marriage viable? Of course, it's a huge uh, matter it's not um, uh, applicable to be answered uh, in a 10-15 minute video, but I will try to um, talk about the highlights of how to answer this question. Uh, I hope that uh, in the near future my books will be also published in English, so uh, those of you who would like to read them will be able to. Should I stay or should I go? First of all, if someone comes to the point to ask this question to themselves or to a therapist, this means that there is some problem in their relationship. When you have a relationship which is uh, running smoothly, that both parties are connected with each other and both parties are in love with, with each other, you do not come to ask yourself or anybody else this question. So if somebody poses this question, a priori, it shows that there is some work to be done in that relationship. And what's the work that we should do when we come to the point to ask the question, should I stay or should I go? First of all, we need to acknowledge in which phase our relationship is in. Is our relationship in a premature phase? Is it the time that we get to know each other? Is it the first three or six months that we are in love or infatuated with each other? And we, our hormones are playing a major role in pushing, in pushing us towards each other. If you, if you come to have this question, should I stay or should I go at the beginning? Uh, you should continue asking yourself the following. Do I really admire this person that I am in a romantic relationship with? What does my logic says about this person, not my emotions? Because since you are in a relationship with this person and at the very beginning, your emotions are fierce and they push you, they urge you to be with that person. What's uh, a realistic um, opinion about my girlfriend, boyfriend. What are the people in my environment that are credible enough to ask them uh, to give me their own uh, opinion or their own maybe more realistic view? Uh, we talk about our relationships with confidence, which might be our friends or our therapist or somebody in our environment or in our family that we think highly of their opinion. We ask those people that we do not feel that they have any resentment towards us or towards our uh, partner, this question. Because if, for example, you are in a relationship with somebody that your mother doesn't approve of, and then you go and ask her, what's your realistic opinion about my relationship? Of course, she will tell you, I do not approve of him or her. So we ask somebody that is a true friend, somebody who has been proven in the past that he is realistic and true to us. We might use our, um, uh, our brain to cut through pieces what the problem is. We rewriting down the pros and cons of our relationship can be very helpful in order to give us a more realistic uh, point of view on where we stand. 
uh, it's better to write on paper rather than type on a computer or type on your phone. Write on a piece of paper. Pros of my relationship or pros of my partner and cons of my relationship or on my part or of my partner. If the pros are much more than the cons, then you might be in a good way. But bear in mind, there are some cons that are red flags that you should consider highly of, especially at the beginning of a relationship. If someone acts in an arrogant and insensitive way, which means that he or she might be a narcissist, this is a red flag. If someone is with us and at the same time has other relationships, if he cheats on his, uh, on his or her other relationships with us, or if he or she cheats us with other relationships, this is also a huge red flag. If the person we are connected with is addicted to gambling, to drugs, to alcoholism, to alcohol, if he has a serious addiction, this is a huge, huge red flag because it is proven, not only scientifically, but from real life stories that addicts can make the worst partners. Addiction is a disease. Addiction is a serious mental disorder that can affect radically the relationships of people who are around an addict. Another red flag is if that person appears to be untruthful. If you are a new love, tells lies easily. If they do not uh, care to share vital information about their lives with you. If they do not uh, feel, um, uh, they, they, they do not look very... Um, how, how should I put it? If they, if they do not like to get to, intro, to introduce you to, the, your, to their family or to their friends, they don't want, to, they don't want you to know ma- many things about their life stories, if they are not willing to open up too much, this is also a red flag. When you try to answer the question, should I stay or should I go in a long-term relationship, there are different things that you need to see of. First of all, ask yourself, have I changed through time since I've been in this relationship? And if I have changed, have I changed to the better or to worse? Good relationships make us better people, a better version of ourselves. If you find yourself that since you are in your long-term relationship, either if this is a romantic relationship, a cohabitation or marriage, and if you find yourself being more stressed, being depressed, being um, uh, feeling empty inside or feeling unhappy, this is a bad sign. Good relationships, uh, healthy relationships turn to make us happier, and better versions of ourselves. Another question to ask yourself uh, in order to answer should I stay or should I go is why was I with this person at the beginning? Answer this. What was the main reason I chose consciously or subconsciously to form a romantic relationship with this person? And is this reason still valid? For example, I was lonely and I decided to form this relationship in order to beat my loneliness. After six months, seven months, one year, two years of this relationship, do I still feel lonely? Or has the relationship helped me to overcome my loneliness? Or um, I went into this relationship because I fell in love with the other person. Now, Eight months after you formed the relationship, one year, two years, three years, are you still in love with this person? Or do you feel um, that she or he is a good companion, but you do not feel any love interest? 
it is essential for any romantic relationship to contain love interest in it, love attraction, sexual attraction, and uh, alive life <laughs> and vital sex life. Sex life is a basic part of romantic relationships. If you are in a platonic relationship, if you are in a in a romantic relationship that turned out to that turned out to be platonic after a few months or a few, a few years, this is something very serious to consider of. Because one major thing that distinguishes romantic relationships from friendships is the sexual part, the erotic part. So it's important for, is, for it to be alive. Another question to ask yourself and your spouse or your partner is, are we both happy in this relationship? Because it's not important just for you to be happy. It's also important for the other person to be happy. You have a successful romantic relationship when both people are happy with their relationship. Let me rephrase it, are content with their relationships because uh, with their relationship because you cannot be happy all the time, every day, every morning, every afternoon. There are some days that are difficult. There, there are some days that you have obstacles, real life obstacles and real life difficulties which make your day bad, a bad day. But if generally what you derive from your relationship is content, I'm content with my relationship, I'm content with my marriage, then you should stay. What are the enemies of long-term relationships? The first enemy of long-term relationships is the unwise choice at the beginning. If we chose the relationship or our partner because of loneliness, because of um, um, any kind of um, interest that is not romantic, because the other person is uh, wealthy and we wanted to have um, someone to take care of us, or if we chose the relationship because we wanted to get over a breakup, if that relationship was a rebound relationship and stuff like that. The unwise choice at the beginning for a relationship is the greatest enemy of the relationship ever because the reasons that you chose your current partner at the beginning will resolve through time. If you, were, if you felt hungry for love and then your partner made you feel full of love, then you do not need him or her anymore. Or if you if you got yourself into this relationship because you needed the financial support that this or that partner should would give you, and then you you are better you are better off financially, then there is no reason for you to keep up with this relationship. So we choose our relationships wisely, and the first danger. The first uh, um, imminent danger for any relationship is unwise choice from the beginning. The second danger, which is a mighty danger as well, is struck up in routine. We fall in love. We choose to be with somebody that we match. We are a good match. We might be even be the perfect match. But then we stop trying for our relationship, we stop, we stop flirting with our husband, our wife, our partner or whatever, and we allow ourselves to immerse into daily routine. Daily routine, daily anxiety, um, worries about money, worries about our jobs, worries about children if we have any, might destroy our, our erotic bond our emotional bond with our other half, and this might be a grave danger to our relationship. Couples, according to my ob opinion, being a psychologist and a couples therapist for over 20 years, is that couples should invest in their romantic relationship. They should spend at least one night a week that they are alone with their partner, in a romantic environment. They might, be, they might go out if they have the opportunity and the means or stay in in a romantic atmosphere. I also believe that once a month they should spend a weekend away, away from everybody, away from home, away from the kids, 
away from any responsibility. Even a night, if not a weekend, a night. A weekend is two nights. One night. They can spend in a resort, in a hotel, in a, in a, they can go camp, camping or whatever in order to feel uh, like a husband and wife, like a partner and a partner again. Because we get wound up in our responsibilities, in our job stresses and everything, and we forget that we are erotic beings, emotional beings, and we forget to take care of our relationship. The third danger, imminent danger to any relationship is having children. Having children is a blessing, but it's also a lot of hard work. And many people, many young people, find themselves worn out from bringing up their young children and growing apart from each other. Especially when you have young children in the house, you should have date nights. And you should have time away from the kids. You might tell me I do not have the money to hire a nanny. Or I don't want to feel obliged to my mother or my mother-in-law to my father or my father-in-law to take care of the kid or the kids to go out. Find a way. Or if you do not have the, the means to get away from uh, bringing up your children, don't make any. Because healthy parents... Health, emotionally healthy parents and the flourishing uh, couple's uh, relationship is very beneficial for the children. I love children very much. I adore children. I used to love and adore children since I remember myself. I gave birth and brought up two children myself. My daughter now in 2020 is 20 years old and my, my son is 23 years old. And I say this with every um, responsibility as a mother and as a therapist, a psychologist and author, is that don't have any children if you do not have the means to bring them up in a healthy psychological environment. And the healthy psychological environment is the one that the parents or the parent, if you are in a, in, in a single parent uh, household, should take some time off away from the children in order to take care of themselves and their inner child and in order to be uh, a positive influence to their children. Angry parents, depressed parents, un un um, anxious parents, worn out parents are not a good influence on their children. Our children get influenced by our personal example more than by anything else we tell them or teach them. So children, having children is the third danger to a relationship. The fourth danger is to allow yourself to be polygamic, poly, polygamous. Polygamous, this is the word, isn't it? Um, I told, I, I said before that uh, routine and engagement in daily routine can drive us away from our relationship and that couples should uh, uh, pay uh, time and money and care and attention to nurture their love relationship. But sometimes you get married to somebody who is a player or you are in a relationship or you cohabit with somebody who is a player. A player, man or woman, is someone who is addicted to having new relationships every three or four months usually every three months. These people, they have been brought up to be that way and there is strong evidence that they might have some genetic influence on being um, drifted away from monogamy. So if you yourself are a polygamous being or you are married to someone who acts in a polygamous way, who acts like a player, then this is a very serious danger for the relationship and it might mean the end of the relationship if you have enough self-respect. Because in our society, in Western society, in 2020, the, the way we understand uh, love relationships is monogamous. Okay? Some people say that they choose to have polyamorous relationships or that they choose to have an open marriage. These people are a minority 
And these people are not the ones who send emails to me asking, should I stay or should I go? I, I cannot comment on polyamorous relationships or on open marriages because it is something that I'm not aware of. I haven't worked with people in that situation. And I don't know any, um, I don't know much of the scientific data, data if there is any, on what these people um, experience long term in polyamorous or uh, open uh, relationships or marriages. I have some examples, but uh, are very, are very uh, little, are very few, so I cannot comment on that. So uh, the majority of us go for uh, monogamous relationships. So if you are in a monogamous relationship and the other person is a player or you are, or you are a player, then your relationship will not last long. Uh, the final um, danger to long-term relationships is when one of the is when one of the partners falls in love with another person. You might he might he or she might not be a player, but if all the previous factors combine, act on the relationship, routine, um, stress. Uh, getting uh, estranged from uh, responsibilities, childbearing, from bringing children up, etc., everyday stresses, and you come to a point that you do not feel in love with your spouse or your partner, it is very possible that you might fall in love with another person. When your partner falls in love with another person, or when you fall in love with another person, then it is very likely that your uh, original romantic relationship or your original marriage will come to an end. Of course, there are people who stay stay in a, a marriage or in a relationship after they have uh, fallen in love with another person who is not their spouse or after their spouse has fallen in love with another person. In that case, usually, usually, most of the time, you have two really estranged adults living together and torturing each other. My opinion is to take care of our relationships in the long term. First of all, we try to make wise choices at the beginning, wise choices, choices based on our wishes and not our needs. Anybody who has any psychological or emotional need should take care of themselves, ask the help of a, of a therapist, find their own balance before engaging into a relationship. And once we engage into a relationship, try to nurture a relationship on a daily basis because our, our romantic relationships are very essential to our well-being. And if we come to a point that we have drifted apart, ask for help. Ask, from, from, ask for help from a couple's therapist before one of you drifts farther away and falls in love with another person or cheats on you or cheats on or, or, or breaks the monogamy of the relationship. So I cannot answer the question for you, for any of you, if you should stay or uh, if you should go, but... Uh, Having, um, having uh, seen this video, you can ask yourselves honestly the, que the questions I propose for you to ask. And if you, can, and if you still can't find the answer to this uh, question, why not consider seeing a therapist uh, face to face? If you liked my video, please subscribe to my channel. Every Friday, a new video in English is released from my channel at 1 p.m. Thank you for watching. Have a nice weekend, everybody. Bye.